I'm Felicity from Felicity Duke Sewing and I'm back with you today to share my very, very special Tim Burton-esque Christmas tree pattern and tutorial. So here we are, this is what we're back doing today. Um, this is the first time I've ever shared this uh, special pattern with anybody but you can get my pattern in the description below. So let's crack on with this because this is quite a, a, an involved project. So first of all I need to share with you the little tin things here. Um, I got these from Hobbycraft, I think they were a pound each and I have taken off on two of them, well this one, I've actually taken off the handle, that says I like little bucket pail things with a handle on it, um, I've taken them off um, because if I didn't take them off I couldn't get this circle around here properly, they were standing up here and in the way. Right, so what do we need to make this? Something very unusual that you may not have used before. So this is what I've used for this. Now this is probably new to a lot of you and if you've got men around the house or you might even have it in your stock this is what I use. I use this which is foam filler and it's used to um, block up holes and things in walls but I use it for this because it's so stable it's wonderful but you do need 24 hours to let this go solid so if you want to use this then do if you've got something else you like to use I have never found anything that works quite as well as this when I stand something in it okay so this is what we've got to do now be careful when if you use this uh, foam be careful that you only need whatever you're using filled up to about halfway um, my husband did this for me and went a bit crazy so it all came up at the top I do want it up at the top but certainly not that amount all right so you can use what you like you know if you've got a suitable vessel somewhere you don't want it too big I think this one's about four inches five inches you don't want it any bigger anyway when you've done this you need to get yourself a sharp knife obviously this isn't anything for children you need to cut it off put it down now I'll show you in a minute There you are, I've cut the top off. I'm still going to keep it rounded a bit. So I've cut more or less flat on the top, but we still want it rounded. So I'm going to get the knife and I'm going to put it at an angle right the way round. Now, you also need a string of... I don't know what they are. I think they're like a string of baubles, really. So that's it. Just make it a bit rounded. Keep on hacking away at it with a strong knife. I don't know what I was going to say. I took it from the kitchen. Never mind. you will have to sharpen it, won't he? Okay, so I think that's just about how I want it. Um, now, you can push it down. You can mould it down a little bit if you don't think it's right. Mould it round. That's right, so we get a little bit of a slope going. Perfect. So this is what they uh, we need to use. Apparently this is called bead chain. So I've got a nice hot glue gun here that's been on for a while. Now don't try and put these beads on um, too many at a time. All right, so... The most important thing is that you get the glue right around the edge because you don't want to see this foam showing, all right? So I like to do just half of it, about half, sometimes even less. Right, so I'm going to get that piece on. Let's do it from that side. Mind your fingers because this is super, super hot, she says, ouch. Right, get it down as close to whatever you're using as you can because you don't want to see 
the glue or the filler. Okay, I've gone halfway round now. I'm just going to glue the other side. Now, don't try and wind it round because don't try and wind it round and round because what will happen is you might end up away from the center where you've got to put your um, your tree. So what I do is I come around here, push it down as far as it will go, push it down, ouch, as far as it will go, cut off. There we are, cut off there. Okay, and that keeps quite a nice circle if you do it that way. Right, I'm now going to carry on gluing right the way around and building up to near the centre. Don't go right into the centre because you've got to push a stick in there. So, there you are, all covered nicely. And just in case you're wondering, um, the little box that I bought for a pound had five metres in it. And uh, the five metres have made, has made uh, th three of the tops with the balls on, okay? So now our next thing is you need a dowel. Um, I bought these again from Hobbycraft. I bought 12 for three pound. Um, about 12 inches, um, I think, is the regular one that they do. Um, but I did chop off three inches. And so now... Leave, I've got a little hole in the middle there, so I'm going to poke that in there, push it right the way down, and there you go. It's all ready for your tree. So let's get on with the fabric side. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to do this. Um, this is what you will receive um, if, you, if you have a look uh, in the descriptions this is what you'll receive it's it all fits onto a4 sheet of paper and I've shown you um, the circles so on on these what I do is uh, let's see if I get the other one maybe that one's easier yeah okay so can you see the circles on there and I've put gems and buttons in between so you will receive uh, this where these are the circles so you'll have to mark those this is where I put the gems going up here and there is where you put your other gems. So right, I'll show you what I'm using in just a moment. Let's see what we've got. So I've got a few buttons here. You, as I say, you will get all this in the description, but I've got some diamante, single diamantes, one of these jewels that um, you can sew on, some buttons, um, some buttons and a piece of ribbon and a green pom-pom green pom-pom okay so now you will probably notice that I have done free embroidery to hold on um, these here I'm not going to do that because I'm aware that a lot of you probably can't do free embroidery and it's not necessary to do it I'm going to hand sew mine on All right. I'm using a piece of uh, silk, um, which is the same fabric as the other two I've made. So this measures 17 by 10 inches. I've also ironed on some interfacing. Now this is a very, very thin iron-on interfacing. Okay, so once you've got your pattern, you need to lay it on here and draw around the back on the interfacing fold it in half so you've got two pieces like that and you need to draw around don't worry do it in pen so you can see it well then the next thing you've got to do because you need to see this on that side to do your embellishments you a good idea would be to hand sew just outside of the line as I've done here all right so it's this side of the line not inside it because if you do that inside you will see it when it's turned around to the right way all right. so the other thing I want to point out to you is I have got this like that so so I like mine to all be facing this way all right now on here I've drawn it the opposite way 
Now, when I turn that round the right way, it will be facing this way. All right, so remember that to turn it round the correct way, how you want it to look. Of course, this is one of those designs where, you know, you can use your own imagination to do what you want to do. So although I'm going to show you this and I'm showing you what I'm using, of course, you know, use what you want to. Any gems, any colour, um, cotton, fabric, whatever. So I will just show you how to put it together. Um, so what I've done here, I've cut out some circles from Lame, um, a silver Lame, and I have bonderwebbed just onto uh, a little sm a small piece of this circle, not the whole piece. You don't have to bond a web at all. And the reason I haven't bond a web onto all of it is because I want it to fray. I quite like the, um, the fraying. So I'm going to go now, I'm going to just sew around. Now use, I'm going to use a purple thread to just go in and out, in and out and sew these on because I want people to see the stitching. I'm not trying to hide it. Um, yeah, I'm going to use a purple. Another thing I, I meant to say, um, when you res when you uh, manage to get your, your pattern, I would either um, trace it through tracing paper or some grease proof paper. The next thing I would do, if you want to do the same as me, or if you want to transfer your own design, would be I normally make a hole in the centre and then place this over the, um, the piece that you've hand sewn around and just make a dot to indicate where you need these to go, where you need the gems to go up there and where you want to put the gems down here as well. I've sewn on the buttons and the gems um, following my pattern um, for the placement but as I said before you can do whatever you like um, you don't need to follow the placement that I've done but just keep well away from your seams now as I um, I'm not sure if I said this before, but this, in fact, the pattern that uh, you're going to download is actually your machine line. This is not the line that you cut out. It is your machining. And you must keep on, um, keep it all in one piece like this so you can fold it over. Um, because if you cut this out, if you was to cut this out along this line, you wouldn't be able to machine it. Um, it would be too narrow around here. Um, the other thing is I was, uh, I was thinking that if you haven't got a sewing machine, you could easily hand sew this. It's not, it wouldn't be a very long, difficult job to hand sew. So no machine is necessary. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to keep this folded over but I am going to machine round, leaving a, a gap at the bottom here. Um, have I? Yes, I've left the markings there. Two marks there. Leave a gap there so you can turn it through. Um, and I will be back. It, when, when you machine, um, if you've got something to slow the machine down, the stitches down, then uh, use that. Um, if not, um, do it on a number two and just um, come around here very slowly. I've machined around here. Uh, keeping to the uh, inside of the hand stitching. Uh, no need to unpick the hand stitching, it's fine, it'll just turn inside. So now my next job is to turn this through um, and then it needs stuffing and uh, it's probably about the worst, the worst part of this really. I'm just going to turn it through and cut it down. Don't forget to do lots and lots of snips all around here because otherwise it won't turn through very well. All right, where it goes like this, please snip. Okay, so you've probably discovered by now what a pain this is to turn through. Um, it's okay though, just keep going at it. Um, don't stop when you think you've got you've done enough because there's probably more to turn through. Remember, it's got to go and curl curl right the way around. All right. Now, the other thing is you've got to stuff it. If you remember when you stuff, just to put small pieces in. Don't put a whole chunk in um, somewhere where you want to get along this little bit. So I always use a um, a chopstick here. Don't use anything with a pointed end because if you go through the fabric then you are in trouble. 
you know. So I just take little pieces like this. So push it up as far as you can inside. And just keep on going. It will go around the curve. And it's not a bad idea. Uh, sometimes I put a double row of stitching small stitches a double row so that um it makes it that little bit stronger because you've got to put quite a lot of pressure on this okay so i've got that to the end all right so keep on stuffing just keep on going you need quite a firm stuff in it don't do a, you know something which is very soft because you need this to stand up so here we are nearly finished um, I just want to share with you how firm this has to be in order for you to get the shape right. Okay, now the other thing I think I forgot to say is when you use the dowel here, um, you need to wind a piece of fabric round or piece of ribbon. Um, I've, I've wound some silver on this piece of dowel, but yeah, a little way down and, and don't do it right to the bottom, but a piece in the middle. You should be able to work it out. It's difficult to give you measurements because you may need to use the whole of the 12 inch piece of rod. Um, on the other hand, you might use a smaller thing to use, in which case you would need to cut more off. So I don't really know. So now what? has to be done is you need to stick a needing, uh, needing, knitting needle in the wadding to get yourself a channel in order to put this in. So you have to use something like a knitting needle with a point on. So I'm just going to sew up the bottom here. And now I like to keep the needle in while I'm sewing the bottom. It's a bit of a challenge, but it's better because then I know that um, I'm leaving a hole in the correct place. So I'm going to sew up each side of here uh, with a ladder stitch and uh, and then I'm going to put it on here and then we're done. So there you have it. My tutorial for my very special Tim Burton-esque Christmas tree. Um, this would make a great present for somebody. Somebody who likes something a bit wacky. A little bit like me really I'm, I'm a bit wacky you'll get to know me right so all I really need to do is to wish you a Merry Christmas and to say if you need any help with this tree or any of my other tutorials I've done then please get in touch with me if you would like the pattern for this you will find that in the description below I will be back very soon um, with a couple of uh, videos for you to watch. Uh, they're not tutorials, but the content I will uh, keep as a secret. Um, I just need to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and keep safe. And I will see you very soon. Bye for now.